we're going on with, with uh, answering our questions. Remember, it is important to read the statement, to check what you are given. Remember what you are looking for. Whenever you look at, at, at the diagrams, you are just looking for theorems. Remember the 10 theorems. The first two, a line drawn from the center of a circle, uh, perpendicular to a chord, bisect the chord. A line, uh, uh, the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Subtended by the diameter, 90 degrees. Two tangents from the same point. All those theorems, you look for them in this diagram. When I look at this diagram, I just don't look at it for, 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 for just looking at it. I'm just checking the theorem. In other words, I'm guided by all these theorems. In actual fact, this is what I'm looking for in that diagram. Do I have anything that looks like this in this diagram? Because that's where the solutions will come from. Now, let us look at what we're given. Now, watch here. The first question says, the first statement says, RDS is a tangent at D. I want us just to look at that statement. The statement is, RDS is a tangent at D. Do I know any theorems that deals with the tangent? Yes, how many there are? There are only three. There are only three theorems that deals with the tangent. Only three. It's this one. It's called the tan cot theorem. It's this one, tan radius theorem. It's this one, two tangents from the same point. This is where your solution will come from, just from the statement that I'm given that RTS is a tangent at D. Now, when I look for the third one, let's look at let's look at the diagram. Do we have two tangents that come from that, that are coming from the same point outside this circle? No, we don't have two tangents. So the theorem falls off. I'm looking for the third one that deals with the tangent. Whenever a radius meets a tangent, 90 degrees is formed. I'm looking for the theorem. Do I have that one here? Yes, I do. This is a radius. This is a tangent. What is this saying to me? It tells me that this whole angle here. Is 90 degrees. So if this one is 40, all this one will be 50. Angle D3 and 4 will be 50 degrees since D1 is 40, the one that I'm giving. The third theorem that deals with the tangent, tan cot theorem. Whenever tan, tan cot, the angle between a tangent and a cot is equal to the angle subtended by that cot in the alternate segment. Do we have a tan cot here? Yes, we do have. Look at this angle here. This angle here, which is 40 degrees. Look at this angle that I'm given here, 40 degrees. This is a tangent and this is a chord. This angle is between a tangent and a chord. It will be equals to the angle subtended by this chord in the alternate segment. So if this is 40 degrees, the other one will also be 40 degrees. This one will be 40 degrees. We just got that from the statement that this line is a tangent and I look for three theorems. Do I have all three of them here? I only have two. I don't have two tangents from the same point. So from that information, we were able to find that this angle is 40 degrees. We were able to find that this angle is 90 degrees just from the fact that RDS is a tangent. Let's look at this next one. BC is equal to CD. I'm trying to emphasize the fact that most of the solution will come from the statement that we're given. So if we say BC is equal to DC, let's look at that. BC is equal to CD. Ah, I see some kind of a triangle here. What type of a triangle is this? We go back to grade, uh, uh, grade 9. BC equal to CD. What type of a triangle is this one? Is an isosceles triangle. Remember that angles opposite equal sides are also the same. So what is this saying to me? This also is equal to 40 degrees. How did you find this 40 from? From the fact that we've got an isosceles triangle where this side is equal to this side. So the base angles there, or others call them base angles will be equal. Or angles opposite equal sides are the same. So that will be 40 degrees. Maybe let me, let me just stop there because I can see the center theorem also. The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. I see all those theorems in this diagram. If you go there with an open mind, knowing that all that will be required for you to, to identify here are the theorems and they are only time. Right, first question. Uh, 7.2.1, find the size of angle BDC. Where is that angle? BDC. Well, just looking for this angle here. This angle here. B, D, C. We've already found this angle that is, it is equals to 40 degrees. But let's, 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 let's find it the correct way. Number one, I'm going to use this theorem, the tan cot theorem. I'm going to find that angle because it is equal to this one. Once I find that one, I will know this one. Number one, you've got to say uh, angle D1, D1 
is equals to angle B B1 equals to 40 degrees. Why is angle D1 equals to B1? It is because we've got tan cot theorem. Tan cot theorem, that is 40 degrees. Once you identify that B1 is the same as D2, then you can find your, your, your I mean, you find D1 is the same as your B1, tan cot theorem. Then you've got to find this angle that we're looking for, which is BDC. How do you find a BDC? You say angle B, DC is the same as what? Remember, I'm doing 7.2.1. BDC, BDC, it is the same as angle B1. Why is this two the same? Uh, why is BDC, BDC the same as B1? Because we've got an isosceles triangle. Triangle. We're well, given that BC, is equals to CD. We've got an isosceles triangle. Remember, we're looking for BDC. BDC is equal to B1, but B1 is equal to 40. Therefore, BDC is equal to 40 degrees as well. This angle is equal to 40 degrees, the one that we're looking for. It's just two marks. It's very easy. Just apply theorems exactly as you see them. Number two, let's do the second one. 7.2.2, 7.2.2. What are we looking for in this particular case? We're looking for o angle O1, angle O1. Is it O1 first? Oh, no. 7.2.2, you've got to find the value of angle C. This is where C is. This is where angle C is. We're looking for this angle here. Now watch here. What do we call this? Ah, ah. This is called a triangle. There are three angles here, three angles. What do you know about the sum of interior angles of a triangle? This is grade eight. It comes out in grade 12. What do, you, what do you know about the sum of interior angles of a triangle? They are equal to 180 degrees. So in other words, angle, we're looking for angle C. So we know that angle C, we know that angle C, this angle plus angle B1, plus angle D2 is equal to 180 degrees. The reason, sum of interior angles of a triangle. Alright? So C will be equal to 180 minus 180 minus these two. Minus B1. What is B1? B1 is 40 degrees. Minus uh, D2, D2 is also 40 degrees. So we've got 180 minus 80. So angle C, will, what is 100? 180 minus, minus 80, it will be 100. So that's the value of angle C. It is 100 degrees. So we know this value now, it is 100. Right, what is the next question there? 7.2.3. Let's see what we're looking for there, 7.2.3. Calculate the value of A. Where is A? Oh, A is there. How do you find, how do you do this one? Remember, it's all about theorems, good people. You must be able to recognize, now watch here. What do we call this? Ah, think of theorems. Nothing else but the theorems. One, two, three, four. It's called a cyclic quadrilateral. What do we know about the sum of opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral? When you add the angles opposite in a cyclic quad, you will always get 180 degrees. You just apply theorem, it will give you solutions. Now, I know that this angle plus this angle will be 180. I know that this angle plus this angle will be also equals 180. So I use these other ones. Let's do this thing. We know that angle A, we're looking for angle A. Angle A plus plus angle A plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. The reason, we've got a cyclic quad. Cy cy okay, let me just save time. We've got a cyclic quad. 
What cyclic quad is this? It's A, B, C, D. Cyclic quad A, B, C, D. That's why you say angle A plus angle C is equal to 180. We get that from our theorems. The theorem says this angle plus this angle is equal to 180 degrees. Whenever you've got two, the sum of two opposite angles in a cyclic quad, you will always get 180 degrees. The only thing that is asked in Euclidean geometry are the theorems, nothing else. All the questions are just checking whether we understand our theorems. Now, right, we just said angle A plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Let's go further. Do we know? We're looking for A. We're looking for C. So take C that side. So angle A will be equal to 180 degrees minus angle C. Do we know what is angle C? Yes, we've just found angle C to be 100. So it's minus 100. Therefore, angle A will be equal to, what is 180 minus 100? It will be 80 degrees. That is the value of angle A. I always believe in putting whatever you've got, 80 degrees. For argument's sake, somebody who don't see the way that I see things, the way that I see them, let's find another way of finding the same angle A and see if we can find the same thing. Uh, let, let's work it out here. Oh, let's work it out in this space. Let's find our space here and find angle A. Now watch here. We already know that we must get, for angle A, we must get 80 degrees. Let's check if we look for any other way of finding A. Are we going to find the same thing? Okay, now watch here. Look at this angle. This whole angle here, I'm trying to use the time code theorem. I'm trying to use this theorem here. This theorem, the tan chord theorem. The angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle subtended by that chord in the alternate segment. Now, with that theorem in mind, let's try and work things out this side. Uh, I, I'm trying to see that this angle is formed by this chord. Now, if I look at this whole angle here, do you see this whole angle here? It is between a tangent and a chord. This line, therefore, is a tangent. This one is a tangent, and that would become my chord. I'm talking about the angle that is between a tangent and a chord. To find the angle equals to this, I've got to take this chord and go to the circumference. Remember, I'm looking for angle A. Now, we can say that angle D1, okay, angle D1 plus, this is D1 plus D2 plus D2. Where is this angle? Angle D1 plus D2. The position of this angle becomes important. It is between a tangent and a chord. What chord? Chord BD. All right, angle D1 plus D2 is equal to uh, the angle subtended by this one, which is angle A. Reason, tan chord theorem. Therefore, angle A will be equal to, what is D1? D1, we are given D1 to be 40, plus D2. What is D2? It is also 40. Therefore, angle A1, angle A is equal to, what is 40 plus 40? It is 80 degrees. No matter how you do it, you will come back to the same solution. Because angle A is exactly equal to, that's the beauty of Euclidean geometry. You can find different ways of doing the same problem, as long as we are mathematically correct. Let's look at the last problem. We are looking for now angle O1. 7.2.4. We are looking for 7.2.4. We are just looking for O1. Angle O1. Do I see angle O1? Yes, I can see angle O1. Where is the position of angle O1? It is at the center. It is here at the center of a circle. Do I have any theorems that deal with the center? Yes. What are we looking for? We are looking for this angle which is here at the center. <laughs> I can see this diagram here. This is actual fact what is being asked. We know that the angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. The one at the center is two times bigger than the one at the circumference. So if you do have the angle at the circumference as 40, what will be the angle at the center? It will be two times 40, which will be 80 degrees. And we are doing the same thing in this particular side. We are looking for O1, and O1 is at the center. 
Do I know the angle at the circumference? Yes, we know the angle at the circumference, that it is 80 degrees. And we know that it's all about theorems. We know that the angle at the center is two times bigger than the one at the circumference. But both these angles must be subtended by the same arc or chord. Let's look at this chord, chord BD. Look at chord BD. It goes to the center. The same chord goes to the circumference. When we have that scenario, the one at the center will be two times bigger than the one at the circumference. Let's do this thing. We therefore say angle O1 is twice the angle at the circumference. In other words, if I want to equate them, I must multiply the one at the circumference by two so that they will be equal. Angle O1, if I want to equate it with angle A, I must double angle A to angle A. Reason, uh, center theorem. Angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle in the circumference. Or just say center theorem. So O1, remember that we are looking for O1. So angle O1 is equal to 2 times. What is angle A? Do we know what is angle A is? Yes, we've just found angle A to be 80 degrees. So it will be 2 times angle A, 2 times A that. Therefore angle O1 will then be equal to 2 times 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 0 is 0. So it will be 160 degrees. So angle O1, this is how you, you respond to any question on Euclidean geometry. Remember at the back of your mind, you are being required to, to check whether you understand your theorems. You just look for the theorem in the complicated diagram. There are so many theorems in this diagram, you just be, you've got to be able to pick them out and use them to solve the problem. Thank you.